everybody. Thank you so much for coming today and joining me for this video. Today, we're doing a special study. One of my all time favorite things to do is to look through my library of art books. And I have quite a few that talk about uh, paintings or works done by masters, such as Michelangelo, Raphael, etc. And I have this book here that is called Painting Lessons from the Great Masters, and it breaks down quite a few different concepts, but it has some beautiful works in it, just absolutely stunning, as you saw in the little intro. And I really want to do a master study because this particular chapter is talking about color plates and just your color theory and how different artists chose their colors for their particular works and I am hoping to work on this one. Um, the medium I'm going to be using is gouache. There's a couple reasons why I'm going to choose to do gouache. One of it is because I'm going to be using watercolor paper and watercolor paper, while it can have, sorry, my dogs are in the background. If you look at my little pups in their cages, chewing on their antlers at the moment. Um, little tip for everybody. Antlers are great chew toys for dogs. Um, anyways, <laughs> you hear the gnawing, that's them in the background. But, I'm using gouache because acrylic tends, at least my experience with acrylic, it tends to be a little too heavy for watercolor paper and then I'm still learning how to get depth and dimension in my watercolor whereas I feel I have a better grasp with that in gouache um, and yet I'm still also trying to practice my and increase my ability to do gouache. So, I'm going to work on a particular piece of that. I'm going to kind of set up my table in a particular way and then I'll talk about the piece I chose and we're gonna start kind of getting into the painting process. So, stick around, let's see how this goes. Okay, everybody, we're back at my little mini setup that I have right now until, again, until I kind of get my studio. Um, it's just set up here in the living room. I have a little portable easel that my husband got me for my birthday this year. It has a place for paints, a little drawer to pull out said paints, and this piece here just kind of comes up. You can, there's little twists on the side to secure it, and then there's this bar here for if you have a canvas that's going to go past this board. Um, I'm not done a canvas that big I at least recently I don't like big canvases also don't mind my dogs in the background um, I've got two silver labs they're five months old and Lily who is currently looking longingly out the window and then Gunner's chewing his antler so they're gonna be loud they'll probably move they might play together we're gonna ignore them for the moment <laughs> um, anyways getting back to this big canvases I find very scary so I've not done one in a very long time it's a goal of mine to do one and kind of tackle that here at some point uh, that will most likely be a video because it most likely will not turn out the way I hope and that will become funny content um, anyways <laughs> I know I had mentioned this book the book that says painting lessons from the great masters this is by Hareward Lester Cook and I got this just from my school library. They were clearing out their, their section of older editions of books and they were giving them away for free to the students and I snagged quite a few of our art, art books, this one included. Very loud. Anyways. <laughs> The piece that I chose for us to do today is by Jean-Jacques Henner and it is titled Alsatian Girl and it is painted on a wood panel and I chose this one 
for a couple reasons. One, I really love the color palette. Two, I really like the fact that the subject, subject, the girl, is facing in one direction and it's very, you know, you're dealing with just a profile. And so instead of having to worry about having symmetry and having all of the images or all of the features the exact same, or a three quarter, which throws them off, I'm just dealing with one of everything. So it's kind of the cheat way out, but I, for practicing, for getting used to this practice format, I'm okay with that for the moment. A couple things, because in this book, they kind of do a practice, kind of like a little excerpt on each painting about it, what the artist was learning at the time, different things that they noticed. And there were a couple things that stood out to me when reading this about this one. Some of it was the fact that the practice of painting what you see, not what you know. And what they mean by that, right, is you go, here's this girl's face. And we know that skin has a certain hue. It has a certain tint. You might go, oh, well, she's got more of the pale white complexion. But he didn't paint her with a white complexion. He actually used yellow. And that helps more with the hue and the tint and the colors for this particular piece. And so that is a reminder I always have to tell myself is don't paint something that you see or that you know is the color, but paint what you see. And that is a really good reminder because reflections off of things, you might see something that just by itself might be a black or a dark color, but when a reflection hits it, it's gonna have different colors. And I have to remind myself, paint what you see, not what you know. But another thing that I thought was really interesting, and this was a good little reminder from this particular book, is they were talking about how this was a complete practice that he was doing. Henner had no intention of this becoming a famous piece. And so then he wrote a little excerpt in this and it says, the lesson to be learned is don't throw anything away and sign everything you do. So the lesson to be learned, don't throw anything away and sign everything you do. And I think that's also a really good reminder for artists is sometimes we see pieces that we don't like and we go, ah, oh, this isn't good, I'm gonna throw it away. And we don't realize that it does have value and there's other people who will see that value in it even if we can't see it ourselves, even though it's our own work. And so don't throw it away, sign it and keep it. And perhaps it will find a good home someday. Anyways, we're gonna get it set up. The next kind of process and next few videos or clips are going to be in a time-lapse format just because I don't know how long this is gonna take me. So I'm probably gonna do a voiceover. Um, but let's get painting.
All right, so now I've got my first few brush strokes down on the page. And what I did is I put the book that had the image to the right of me so that I could constantly look back at the composition, at the color comparisons. And while mine wasn't 100% on the mark with accuracy, it was pretty close and I was happy with the result in the end. And I really loved this practice. I was able to focus not so much on, oh, what color should I choose or what should the composition be? I didn't have to stress about any of that. I could really just focus on how the colors relate to each other and how they work well to e with each other. And I also was able to focus on my ability to render the subject. As y'all know, I struggle a lot being able to render the human form. And so I liked the fact that I was able to not stress about the proportions. I could just kind of copy it over and focus on my ability to copy it. Um, a lot of people, I think, sometimes frown upon this masterwork study of copying other artists' images. I am hoping to be able to move past this at some point and being able to take what I learned from them and apply the techniques and the knowledge into my own pieces of work. But because I'm at this stage of learning, I don't think there's anything wrong with necessarily copying a, a composition of an artist as long as you give the rightful acknowledgments to that artist it would be completely wrong if i did this video painted this image and tried to pass it off as my own and went oh yes this was completely my own ideas for colors and subject matter but because i am going no i'm studying a masterpiece's work and i'm trying to take all of those other distractions and complications and really focus in on the basics and because I gave the proper um, acknowledgement to the artist in the beginning, I see nothing wrong with this. In fact, I highly encourage it for other artists because then I can hopefully move on from this point to then go, oh, I'm gonna choose my own subject matter or my own ideas, but I'm gonna use techniques that I learned while practicing this. So don't let you know that opinion discourage you but at the same time if you do replicate an artist's work make sure you always give credit to that artist because it is all of their hard work and their original forethought that put you in that position so it is extremely important to give credit where credit's due however we kind of got sidetracked um as you can see here, and the lighting's not the absolute best because I was dealing with an overhead light um, in my living room, but my colors for the face and the hair all turned out to be very orangey. The yellow was very, very yellow, and I did not like it. So I actually went in with a little bit of white just to subdue it a little bit. I also went in with a soft pink to help kind of give it more of its fleshy tone, and I think the end result when you see it at the end, I think, while not perfect, works a lot better than just sticking with the basic yellow. Um, I also tried to focus in more on the hair because her hair the first few times kind of looked more orangey, but in the image, her hair has more of that brown and actually a lot of dark black tones into it. And so I wanted to make sure that I gave the proper weight of that depth into it so you kind of see because her hair blends into the ribbon of the hat and her cloak her clothing and so I wanted to make sure that I'm not just oh here's the hair here's her outfit but allowing there to be that blend just like there is in the original piece so sit back relax i hope you perhaps may have grabbed a piece of paper some you know drawing tools and i hope you're maybe trying this out or even looking up your own masterpiece works that you could possibly use as study tools uh, this is uh, like i've already mentioned it's a great technique and a fantastic way to practice and to learn about 
art history in general, which I think is such an important thing to learn. So maybe take this moment to kind of look up some references as you're just watching and listening to the relaxing music. getting to the end of my piece as I'm putting the fin finishing touches on it and I just wanted to tell all of you thank you so much for coming today I know I missed last week's video this in fact was supposed to be last week's video I recorded this right before the weekend but then my weekend I was out of town and busy for some family parties and then I had just an extremely stressful and busy week and wasn't able to really catch up so I wanted to let this be a reminder. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to have that moment to help you catch up as long as you're sure that you keep yourself accountable. So that's what I'm doing today. I made sure that I had this done and I took this video and I'm posting it today to get me back on my schedule. But remember that everyone deserves grace and everyone deserves that ability to make mistakes and to kind of get back on that schedule so don't forget to give each other grace but also to allow yourself some of that grace i hope this video allowed y'all to learn something and was inspiring to you i love this piece i'm so proud of it and i'm really looking forward to what i'm able to do this week um I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe if you guys have any suggestions, please leave it down in the comments or comment or message me over Instagram. I'd love some ideas of something that I could try. Or if you have a favorite artist in a particular piece, please let me know. I'd love to look them up. Thank you guys so much for coming today and I hope you have a great week.